on this morning. Let's just take some time to worship God. Thank you. 
Silence me.
There's nothing to fear. There's no fear when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet we stand in a world, we stand in a time where fear is rampant and it's, and it's coming from everywhere because it's the fear of the unknown. But thank God we have a known God. And he's in our hearts and he's alive and he's in here. And the presence of the Lord is in here right now. And I want us to pray. I want us to pray as a body, as an impact body. And then I want us to pray for our nation and pray for everyone that you might know that's in need. God is Jehovah Jireh. God is Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace and he's our grace and he's our provider. And he's going to do the very thing that he said he would always do. He's going to take care of his children. So pray with me right now. Let's go into the spirit. Because we're not dealing with principal. I mean, we're not dealing with natural things. We're dealing with principalities and power and rulers of darkness. And that's why Paul said, put on the whole armor of God and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that will penetrate the darkness. And we, we live in a world of faith and a world of hope and a world that is connected to the life of God. Yes. Father, we thank you. Oh, grace. We declare grace to this mountain. We declare grace to this virus in the name of Jesus. And we command you to die. We command you to leave. I thank you when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard, raises up a banner against it. And I thank you, Father, you're ministering hope to this, to this body. You're ministering hope to the Christians around the world. And we join together with them in prayer. Trust in you. You are our Heavenly Father. And you hear the prayers of your children. And I thank you for ministering life and hope. Father, those who don't know Jesus, yet this, let, let this just be a time that God is glorified, that Jesus is magnified, and thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions even into the billions will come into the kingdom of God. Use us to be light in the midst of darkness. We're your children. We lift up our heads. You said when you see these things happening, lift up your eyes for your redemption draws nigh. This is an incredible opportunity to touch the lives of people. So I pray today, I pray for your anointing to come on this body, your anointing to come on us. Use us in these days, Father, to minister life. And we bless this nation. We bless our president. We bless those that are gathered together and, and their minds. Give them the spirit of wisdom to come up with the right answers. And we thank you for our hope that is in you. And we give you praise. I want you to do something right now. And I, and I know you're watching in your homes because this is what we're having to do right now. But I want you to do something with me. I want you to lift up your hands. Now let's together, let's just thank the Lord. Yeah. Father, we thank you. With open arms, you said to lift up holy hands to you. We lift up our hands to you because we look to you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we thank you for the victory that is in Christ. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And so we praise you, Lord. And I thank you that even in this season, Lord, you are our victorious Savior. Everything bows to your name. And we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I would say this. Normally, I tell everybody, go grab some money. Give them a good hug. But even though you're meeting two or three, why don't you take just a moment and just share the love of Jesus with your family. Give your kids a big hug. Tell them you love them. And just let peace enter into your home right now. Well, welcome to Impact Church. We're so blessed to, to be here and really to be able to come into your homes this morning and just to share the Word of God with you. And I really want to encourage every one of you, you know, this is our time of announcements here, so I'm going to give you some announcements. The most important announcements is our small groups. This is how we stay connected in the body of Christ. We stay connected as a family. And I want to encourage you to make sure that you, you call the office or you call me. Really, you can call me pers uh, my, my phone number, and I will be glad to uh, uh, get you in contact with any of the groups so that we're all together. Paul said this, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Now, I know our nation has separated us apart in 10 or less, but in our small groups, we can accommodate. We've got enough small groups to accommodate everyone. 
in this congregation. And it's so interesting, about two years ago, when we were developing all our groups and we really were moving in, into discipleship groups, I made a statement, didn't know it was prophetic, but I told the, the, the leadership, I told them, I said, you know, we need to be in a place that if we ever could not have church, that we, could, we would have our small group set and ready to go. Now, I didn't know that was prophetic, but here we are, and we, are, we do have those available. So we love you guys, and you can, you can call my number. I'll give it to you. It's 501-398-9114. You can call me, and we will be sure and uh, get that information to you. I'm going to really, by the Holy Spirit, in the last few weeks, we've been teaching on spirit, soul, and body. And I really prayed, and I said, Lord, you know, do I need to change this? And I really felt a peace from the Lord say, no, you stay with what you're teaching. But I do want to say this about what is happening in the world. Jesus makes the statement in Matthew chapter 24. He said, the day will come that there will be pestilence. There's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. And he said in Matthew 24, these are the beginning of sorrows. So there's no doubt that we are prophetically in this season. But we as children of God have to be encouraged in a heart to know that God's going to protect us and God is with us. You know, they're, they're saying this virus is invisible. Well, I've got a wonderful scripture for you. When I heard that, it reminded me of 1 Timothy 1.17. Now, to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. God is invisible. God, so God's in the invisible. And so he is stronger than anything that comes in the invisible. He's our invisible God. We're in the visible, but he is invisible invisible but yet he is awesome he is almighty and and Paul's telling Timothy he is to receive all glory and all honor you know uh the word that is I've heard so much on the news is the word uncertainty and that word means unpredictable it also means the fear of the unknown and the world is in fear because they don't know what's about to happen no one can tell you how long this is going to last Many people are saying prophetically, this is a short season, it's going to come and go. Hallelujah. If this thing goes on, then that's something we have to deal with. But right now, many, many of us live in this uncertainty. We're all facing this uncertainty, and it's the fear of the unknown. But one thing that gives me so much hope, and I read this yesterday, and I love this, and it's in the Passion Translation. Uh, it is Psalms 139. This will encourage you. I want, I want you to listen to this word. Verse number one, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul. And you understand my every thought before it ever enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me. Lord, you read my heart like an open book. And you know all the words that I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I'm going to take before my journey even begins. Now listen to verse 5, and this is what I want you to see about God. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. Hallelujah. You've gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. Now, we could just stop and camp out on that. I mean, God has gone into the future. So when God created the world, and God does not live, and you've, you've all heard me say this, God does not live according to our time. God lives from the beginning to the end. So when God looks at time, He looks from the beginning, He looks from His place of authority from the beginning to the end. He has already lived from the, the beginning to the end. He has already prepared a way for you for deliverance, for a hope, for security. He's already lived it. So if God's already lived my future, then why should I worry? Why should I be in fear? Jesus tells the disciples in Matthew chapter 7, he tells them, don't fear. He said, if you can just take a look at the birds, take a look at the sparrows, take a look at the lilies. I've glorified them greater than anything. Uh, 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 they're even greater than all of Solomon's glory. But the birds I prepare 
a meal for them. I take care of them. I clothe the lilies. And if I so clothe the lilies of the field, will I not much more? Hallelujah. Clothe you. Jesus is dealing with their faith in a world that they can see, but he's asking them to have faith in a world that they can't see. And we can't see our future, but we know we've got a God that's already lived the future with us. So all I'm doing is walking into a future that God's already prepared. And in that, I rest. I have hope. It gives me peace. And I want you to grab a hold of this. You're, we're all looking for comfort. But I want you to listen to me, and I'll say this with love and compassion, but your comfort is going to be found in the Word of God. God's Word is here to speak to us through this season. It's eternal. It was written for every generation. Even though it was written back in, in the time of Jesus' time, but it was written for us, the future in mind. And God already has lived it. He's already, he's securing us from our past. And no, God's not punishing people with a virus. This is not coming from the Lord. This stuff comes from the enemy. God is good. And it's the goodness of God that brings repentance. I'm not going to sit here and preach to anyone and tell them that God's judging this earth. No, God judged the earth through Jesus Christ. He put the sins, he put the disease, he put it all on Jesus so that we can live in this, in this world with hope and security. And you know, the Bible tells us the angels of the Lord are encamped around about us and care for us. So where do I find my hope? Where do I find my comfort in these times? I'm going to find it in the Word of God. Now, I am not for any of this that's going on. There's not anybody that's for it. But in the midst of it, what it does for me, it takes me back to the Bible, takes me back to absolute truth. And that's where you find your strength during this time. He goes ahead and he says, with your hand of love upon me, you impart a blessing to me. So he's already got blessings prepared for you. And you say, well, Pastor Terry, how, how do you receive that? How do I get uh, out of where I am? Because I, I, I'm, I'm hearing this stuff and I'm seeing this stuff and, and uh, friends of mine are in trouble and this and that. You have to look to him and have to know that he's prepared a blessing and then by faith, by faith receive it. Stand back and begin to do this. Father, thank you. You're in my future right now, and I receive the blessing of the Lord. And that's why I lift my hands, and I thank him in the spirit of praise and the spirit of grace, thanking him for what he's done in my life. So the word here tells us he imparts blessing. And this is, I love this right here, verse 6. For this is just too wonderful, too deep, and too incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. And it is because it goes beyond our mind of where we're living and it has to be received by faith. We, we trust him. Spirit, soul, and body, all three of them, they speak. Now the Bible says this. I read this last week and I want to read it to you again. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. God wants us complete, spirit, soul, and body. The body is not the real you. That's going to be changed. Your soul is eternal. That's your personality. And it's your mind. It's your will. It's your emotions. But the spirit is the real you, which Christ dwells in. And each of these, body, soul, and spirit, they all speak. The body speaks through the five physical senses. Touch, taste, hear, smell, and see. The soul speaks through our thoughts and our feelings and our will. Then the spirit speaks through the word of God. Now that may come by the Holy Spirit. It can come through a vision. It can come through a dream. It can come through impressions. But here's the thing. Every dream, every vision has to line up with the Bible. 
There, there's where we get off if we don't stay with the Word of God. Because when you're, you're talking about out here in the world of visions and dreams, you have to be careful because that's where the, the devil can get off. You, that can, he can get you off. No, it has to line up with the Word. You stay with the Bible. You stay secure in the Word of God. Now, our body speaks. We're hearing and we're seeing. So, is that what we're to live by? If we're going to live by that, here's what will happen. Uh, and it's, it's really, uh, it's what I call majority rules. If I'm going to listen to my body, my mind is going to connect with my body and my soul. And if I, if I hear and I see, well, this is horrible, this is happening, the soul will agree with it and just go, yeah, and it's just, I'm telling you, it's going to happen to me. And then the next thing, your whole world is controlled by your emotions and by your body. And you will take your spirit and you will push them back. Yet in your spirit, God is, lives in there. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So everything you need is in your spirit. But as I said... Majority rules. If I take the word of God and I connect with my soul, the soul has to be transformed when it got born. When you got born again, your soul didn't get born again. If you like to go fishing, you're still going to go fishing after you get saved. You're still going to like it. You're not going to stop liking fishing and you want to go play golf. No, you, that's not going to change. Your personality is going to be the same. Now, it can be enhanced by the Holy Ghost, and it can be touched. Your body will get touched, but it doesn't change. What changes, your spirit becomes one with God. So the mind has to be transformed. It has to be renewed by the Spirit, by the Word of God. And so when the Spirit and the soul connect together as a, as a transformed mind, then what you do is you push the body back. And that's why Paul said we are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we feel. We are moved by the word of God. There's where, you know, life begins to come. Now, as Adam and Eve, they had two trees in their garden. Every one of us have two trees. <clears throat> the tree, the knowledge of, of, of uh, the tree of knowledge was a fear-based tree. And then there was a tree of life, which is grace and faith and love. So I'm going to eat constantly from one of those two trees. Paul says this in Galatians 6, if you sow to the flesh, you're going to of the flesh reap corruption. So if all I'm going to do is give over to my fears, what I'm doing is I'm eating from the tree of knowledge. I'm not eating from the tree of grace and the tree of love. But here's the thing about that tree of grace, and it's for us. You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to reach up by faith and you're going to have to partake of the fruit. You're going to have to eat it. Having a knowledge of the Bible is not good enough. You're going to have to have it in your heart and in your spirit. So, real quickly, number one, the Bible must and always be the absolute authority of truth in our life if we're going to live from our spirit. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, John 4, 24. John 6, 63, and I love this, it is the spirit that gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Jesus said this, my word, it's the spirit capitalized, and I love the way the, uh, they, 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 the, they put this in the Bible because it's correct, the scholars, the way they did it. It is the Holy Spirit that gives life. Jesus said the words that I speak are spirit. That's, that's small s. That's us right here. His words coming out of his my, mouth goes into our spirit. God is a spirit, and if we're going to communicate with him, we've got to communicate with him with our spirit and with truth. And that word truth is talking about the word. It's talking about the truth of the Word of God, fellowshipping with Him. Satan always comes to tempt us in our soul. Our soul is the one that has to be renewed. It's interesting, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, when the enemy came to tempt him, he said, and it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the word word is, in the Greek is the word rhema. It is this right here. 
the Bible, God, the Holy Spirit has a word for you right in the middle of this season. Just stop. Take just a moment. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a word. Kim and I have done that in any situation that we've faced. We have sat down and we've asked the Lord to give us grace and to help us, but also to give us a word that we can wrap our faith around so that we don't get into fear and we don't miss it. So right now, no matter what's going on in your life or where you're at, take the time after you've watched me minister and, and you've got time today, sit down with that Bible. You know, the Holy Spirit wrote, wrote the Bible. I think he knows what it says. And he knows you, he lives in you, and he will show you exactly a word of faith and a word of promise. Eugene Peterson, who uh, put together the message translation, says this. When we read the scripture without listening to God, the scripture is sabotaged. Man, that's strong. If we read the scripture... Without God, we're missing the whole point. We read the scripture with the Holy Spirit, and he speaks to us. God has a message to give us in everything you read in his word. The smallest things we read might not look as important to us, but God has a truth hidden in every single story and every sentence in the Bible. Because the word of God is eternal. The Bible says that the world's are, are going to fall. They're going to go away, but the Word of God will stand forever. So the Word, number one, is the priority in our life. Number two, here's something that's very important. We cannot entertain a thought about us that God does not think about us. I'm going to say that again for everyone. We cannot entertain a thought about us that God does not think about us. Well, I'm, Pastor Terry, this is what's from my past. My, my parents or others have spoken down to me. The, I, you know, they have just spoken all these words into my heart. And that's where my identity and, and everything comes from them. Psychologically, they say we get our identity from our parents and from other people. But listen, you're a spirit. You are a spirit. Your, your identity comes from the Spirit. Your identity comes from a loving Father. A Father that's full of grace and full of hope. And I love what uh, David said in Psalms uh, uh, 2710. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord lifts me up. So no matter where I've been forsaken, where I've been put aside, where others have rejected me, my true identity is not based in that. My identity is based in a Father who loves me and tells me, come boldly into the throne of grace. Run up into my lap and receive mercy and to find grace in, in, in a time of need. So we have this incredible loving God who loves us and our identity comes from Him. So if, if God loves us so much, then I want to know what God is thinking about me right now. What is He thinking about you right now and what's going on? I'm going to use this scripture, and I know many of us have read this scripture before, but I want you to take this to heart for where we're at. Because Israel was getting ready to go into bondage for 70 years. The prophet Jeremiah had already prophesied to them and said, you're going to go into bondage. And, and you're, going to, you're going to come out of Jerusalem, Judea. It's going to be defeated. And he said, don't resist it. But come on in to a, a place. And what you, you re that they saw it in their minds as a place of bondage. But God really created it as a place of protection. To protect them. To bring them out 70 years later. And in the middle of it, can you imagine losing everything you've got? You're watching the Babylonians come in, destroy your homes. You're seeing elders and soldiers that have been killed and family members. And you're, ha you're being brought into a place, and in your mind, it's a place uh, of, a pris of being a prisoner and a slave. And yet the Lord told them, don't resist this. Come on in. It's not, you're not going to be slaves. You're my children. And I have a future for you. 
And he said, I want you to know what I'm thinking about you right now. And this is the comfort that we get. So listen to this. In, Je in Jeremiah 29, verse 10 through 14. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you. I tell you, God's got a good word for you right now. Something to give you life. And he said, and I'll cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Now, if anybody knows the thoughts of God, it's God himself. And here it is. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope. You know, we... If we could get the camera going around, I could just run around this church and just shout. I mean, I'm just telling you. And, and I'm not trying to be fri frivolous over this. You have to receive this in your spirit. Because our Heavenly Father is thinking thoughts toward us. And he's thinking thoughts of good, not evil. He's thinking God, uh, thoughts of hope and to give us peace and to give us a future. Man, thank you, Father, right now. Thank you for that future. Thank you for that peace. And thank you for that grace. Now listen to this. Then you'll call upon me, and you'll go to pray. And I will listen to you. Wow. You want, you want to know one of God's thoughts? Go pray. I'm listening. Go pray. Go talk to me. Pull aside. Don't listen to the newscasters. Don't listen to what others are saying. Don't look at all this. You go pray. I am listening. And you will seek me, and you're going to find me. When you search for me with all your heart. What does it mean to search for God with all your heart? It means to sit in his presence and just be honest. I love you, Father. I'm trusting you. And if I've made a mistake or something, I ask you to forgive me. And you lead me and guide me in this time, and you help me. And you show me your grace and mercy. And I'm going to trust you to do what you have said you would do. And it's in that that we rest. And it's at that place that I'm able to say, now from here, what do you want me to do to help someone else? Because that is what the kingdom is all about. That is where God has taken us. This is not a time to hoard. It is a time to look and see who can I help. Kim got on the phone yesterday, called a lady in our church and said, what can we do? And they said, we never made it to the store. We don't have any toilet paper. And so immediately Kim said, what do you want to do? I said, well, thank God. We bought, we were there, and we were at the store, we were able to get extra, and I said, so take some of mine, plus I bought extra for the church, and so I just want you to know, this is what it's all about. I've been so blessed by our groups. I've already had uh, 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 two groups that have reached out and touched people in our church. You know, that is what the church is all about. It's because we know we have a future, and we know we have a hope, and it doesn't make, a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it does not come near us. It doesn't have to affect us. Now, there's going to be challenges, yes. There's going to be lack in other places. But you know what? In a child of God, there will be no lack. The Bible is true. God is true. He's given us a future and a hope. And he, and he goes ahead and he says, and I'm going to bring you back from your captivity I'm going to gather you from all nations and all places that I've driven you, and I will bring you into a place from which I've caused you to be carried away. Man, God right now takes us, and he's pulling us back into himself. Point number three, and we'll finish this. Our Father says he has plans for only good for us. I read this in the Passion Translation, and I'm going to finish with this, but I hope this just blesses you. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8. Listen to this, because 
of what the Lord says. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings. Yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. Now, if you can get this, the Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity, pleads before the Father for us that we live in a perfect harmony with God's plan for our lives and our destiny. Wow. You know, yeah, wow. Big wow. Everybody look at each other and just go, wow. Okay? We're, we're, in, we're in a season of wow, not a season of woe. Okay? Everybody got that? Hallelujah. Thank God. Now, it goes on. So we're convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. And I know it seems like, well, Pastor Terry, look at all the lack. Yes, I know, but God set as setting everything up to bring good into our lives. You say, what's good about it? Man, I'm really getting to know my family better. There's all kind of good about it. Not only that, I long to get with our groups now because, I mean, when you're, you can't even go to a restaurant. I mean, you're, you're at the house. So, wow, what an opportunity to get out of the four walls and come and connect with believers and share with one another and love one another. So the Lord is bringing us closer together. We don't have to be isolated. Hallelujah. You can look at your family member and say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Pastor Terry's preaching really good. Okay. Then he goes on right here. God's perfect plan for bringing good into our lives, for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design purpose. Oh, my. For he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son, this means the son is the oldest among the vast family of brothers and sisters that will become just like him. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. You are just as righteous as Jesus. You, you can't get any more righteous. Your spirit is whole. That is the real you. Your spirit can't get any more perfect. It's already perfect in Christ. There is the Holy Spirit, Jesus and the Father living right here on the inside of me. He, he's there. And that's why Jesus said, out of your bellies are going to flow. Rivers of living water. The Christian life, when you understand spirit, soul, and body, the Christian life is, is brought down to two things. That is receiving from God and then releasing from your spirit. That is it. Thank you, Father. The, the, this word is written to me. Thank you, you have my destiny in mind. Thank you, you called me to purpose. Thank you for that. Now, in the name of Jesus, I release it. I release it back into the earth. I release uh, in, in thanksgiving and praise for who I am in you. I am somebody. Christ lives in me, the hope of glory. I am righteous. And it says here, I am co-glorified with his son. Perfect righteousness. And he co-glorified me with his son. The triumph of God's love. So what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, then who can ever stand against us? For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. Who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his. God himself is the judge who has issued the final verdict over them. Listen to this. Not guilty. Hallelujah. Not guilty. Sin has been broken. 
sonship has been offered. Future stands before us. Grace is received. Father, I thank you so much for life and for truth. And I thank you for hope. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are causing these words to go deep into our lives and into our hearts. I thank you that as I was ministering your word, I know hope and faith was rising up because these are spirit words. They're not natural words. And they're eternal words. And I thank you that you're going through the airways. And not only to those who are in our church, those who are watching this, that are outside of impact. I want to say this to you. God's not bringing evil. God is bringing only good. And he is a good God and he loves you. And he wants to bring you into his kingdom. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, you do not know him. I'm going to ask you right now to just bow your head. I don't have an altar to ask you to come to, but I will ask you one th thing. If you're sitting down, why don't you stand up? Why don't you stand up where you're at? Ask Jesus to come into your heart. It's a simple prayer. Let me pray it with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and into my life. I ask you to forgive me for any sin in my life. I thank you that this is just not a, a head response or a natural response. This is a spiritual response. I want you in my life. I need you. I need grace and I need hope. And I thank you for changing my life right now in Jesus' name. Now let me pray for anyone that needs healing. I speak life, health, and strength over your mind, and over your body. I thank you for the power of God delivering and setting you free. And I thank you for the anointing going into your homes and it touching you, ministering grace, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to give our church, those who are part of our church, or anyone, who, if you want to sow a seed or an offering to the church, you, you can give like normal, that's impactarkansas.com. You know that you can go online. Also, you can, you can give, uh, you can write a check or whatever you want to. If you prefer to give uh, a check or whatever, you can send it to our, our office. Uh, they'll put the address, eventually they'll put it up there on the screen for you. But then I had several people come to me and say, can I, just this last week, can I drop my offering off at the church? And so what we provided was a mail slot. When you walk up to our front doors, look up to the left, the, the left door over at the end. You can't miss it. We provided a mail slot if you want to do that. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. I appreciate that. And I know many of you are facing situations. I'm not asking you to give. But if you know in your heart, hey, we're going to continue to give our tithes and our offerings during this time. We appreciate it. It helps us to run this ministry and pay our rent and do what we need to do. And uh, we love you and thank you so much for that. There's a very powerful scripture in the book of, of Genesis. And it says this right here, Genesis 26. It said that Isaac sowed seed in the time of famine and God brought to him a hundredfold return. So it's very important. In a time of famine, what are we to do? We're to sow seed. When, when you're in need, sow a seed. And I'm not just saying sow it to the church. Go give it to the poor. Give, give God something to work with. God's not going to just create it out of thin air. No. It's going to come through our giving. It's more blessed to give than receive. And I encourage you as a body, minister to your neighbors. Help them. Minister to people. Minister to people in your home group. And let's love. Let's demonstrate Jesus to our community. But I want to pray for those, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, Kim and I give online, so we always worship God with our tithes and our offerings. So, Father, we take just this moment, and we hold up our iPhones and our giving to you, and we thank you for the privilege of sowing seed uh, into your kingdom. I thank you for everyone that gives to Impact Church and, and supports the church and the ministry and are partnering with us. 
I thank you for blessing them. Let there be divine increase. I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. I thank you that they have jobs. They have the income. I don't care where it comes from. You're Jehovah Jireh. You will provide. And we honor you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say this. For, of course, Kim and I, we love you. Our elders love you. We are praying for you. And uh, I'm going to send a list to everyone who is uh, the, our uh, home group leaders and their phone number. You want to be a part of a home group, please, please get connected over the next month as we walk through this. And let's, let's join as a family with one another. We love you and you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. And may God give you peace in Jesus' name.